morning everybody i thank uh, our chief instructor dr santan gopal was my guru in all india institute for everything not only strabismus and ophthalmology for anything and everything he was my guru in all india institute way back in 80 so i will thank him and the organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak to you on pearls of refractive error Uh, correction in strabismus management which is very 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 important why is refractive correction important <laughs> because i think uh, the glasses provides very sharp image on the retina then it uh, stimulates fusion thereby help in stereopsis the patient to have stereopsis and uh, the glasses balance between accommodation and uh, convergence and uh, also to give constant binocular fusion and to give normal stereo acuity which is 1 in 20 seconds always measure treat analyze any strabismus with regards to best corrected visual acuity i always prefer uh, i think uh, doing refraction myself like that i would uh, also request you to do the same and uh, you can counter check an optometrist or an ophthalmic assistant doing the same or a junior resident if they see that earlier you will have to counter check because you are ultimately responsible for their glasses so it is always better to measure and then give your prescription and uh, interrelated with uh, strabismus and the best acuity visual acuity here again i would like to stress that uh, checking the visual acuity once again if the optometrist in especially in amblyops if they are checked in uh, another room it's better that uh, you counter check once again as much as possible especially when you have a doubt i'll just i thought i'll just project few slides and uh, the first slide anybody from the audience the simplest of all i think it's an just diagnose whatever you think you say no problem give some mic there also please in the audience accommodative esotropia the patient is squinting in the right eye and uh, i think uh, a cycloplegic refraction was done and uh, there was uh, i think uh, orthophoria and uh, with the glasses and uh, central fixation and uh, it was on the foveal and uh, both eyes were having the central fixation and uh, the refraction actually though it was plus 7 plus 5 was given and uh, there was initially you see that uh, around uh, 45 prisms around 20 to 25 degrees uh, for both distance and near the angle was the same and uh, retina was normal in both eyes and uh, once we have given the glasses i think it uh, became orthophoria so my this thing here will be that uh, if the right eye is squinting more what will be your interpretation is the glasses given is right if the right eye is squinting more often than the left eye is the glasses equal glasses is it right yeah because oh, right eye is squinting more often than the left eye i think uh, uh, it is uh, usually i think uh, the right eye will have more hyperopia than the left eye and the right, right eye will have associated amblyopia more than the left eye and if both eyes are amblyopic the right eye will be more amblyopic than the left eye but this case it was alternating freely 50% of the time it was uh, squinting 50% of the time it was straight and uh, it was an intermittent squint and uh, right eye and left eye was freely alternating and once we gave the glasses it was totally orthophoric with uh, good uh, stereo with the glasses so i think ultimately what we should achieve in accommodative esotropia is to give full plus prescription 
in all types. And uh, sometimes I think uh, if the patient or the child is not able to accept, we can give a little weaker cycloplegics, uh, preferably a homide or uh, um, cyclopentlate, just to start with as the, once the child uh, accepts the glasses. So we prioritize vision over isotropia. If vision improves with uh, less plus than prescribed the same, because there were instances uh, cycloplegic flash value will be plus 7, but I think uh, the acceptance may be even plus 4 and then uh, they become straight. So we stop with plus 4. So keep adding the glasses till you leave them with a minimal isophoria because these children tend to get exo and uh, they will have to review it every 4 months or 6 months and uh, keep adjusting the glasses. So prioritize vision over isotropia and also prioritize the angle of uh, squint when the glasses. So it doesn't mean that uh, always that you should give the maximum plus correction. So once again I'm repeating this uh, patient which I showed you was uh, having plus 7 on cycloplegic and accepted plus 5 and made it orthophoria. And uh, if you over correct what happens the child will start peeking over the glasses like this instead of seeing through the glasses because child becomes myopic and once it becomes myopic the vision is not clear. Not only that, you are also I think uh, committing suicide by giving over correction because in the long run the ESO becomes EXO. First initially it will start showing exophoria, then they decompensate and go for intermittent exotropia and then diplopia and then uh, you land up with a decompensated exotropia and uh, wherein I think uh, I had a bitter experience. Mm, I think Mahatma Gandhi's great granddaughter had a similar problem, overcorrected and then it became an intermittent exo and we had to do uh, bilateral lateral rectus to procession to correct the intermittent screen because uh, it never came back again. We discontinued the glasses still it never came back. Especially this can happen with uh, partially accommodative isotropia when uh, you give glasses for the remaining squint and then remaining uh, squint is corrected by surgery. And after surgery you will have to be again careful with uh, giving this uh, plus correction. Case 2, a 5 year child with a visual acuity of 20-20, 6 by 6 both eyes and refraction plus 3. But with the glasses, there was still about 20 prisms ESO. No, there was 30 prisms ESO without the glasses. And with the glasses also, there was a residual ESO. And with all the other parameters being normal. So what we will have to give is uh, bifocal. Okay? A executive bifocal or progressive can be given. And uh, this is uh, the condition wherein it is called as high AC over air ratio and uh, wherein the near deviation will be more than distance. The simplest way to rule out high AC over air ratio will be you give the maximum plus correction for distance and uh, if it is orthophoric and if it is near uh, 30 prisms, you just put plus 3 and uh, relax the accommodation. Always myopic glasses induce accommodation, plus glasses relax the accommodation. And uh, once I think you add the plus 3 in both eyes on the trial frame or over the uh, glasses what the child was wearing and uh, if it becomes orthophoric for near, you give this executive bifocals or the progressive. And again you will have to start, no need that most of the cases will accept plus 3 over correction, near correction. But uh, some cases even with plus 2 or 1.5, they become orthophoric. So prescribe minimal glasses to achieve Again, isophoria or orthophoria. And uh, bisect, bifocals has to bisect the pupils. And uh, uh, off late, I think we have been giving progressive glasses. Off late, I think even executive bifocal uh, blanks are not available. I don't know whether Santana Gopal has the same uh, experience. No, I to progressive. Progressive. It's so, expensive, but I changed to progressive. But uh, executive bifocals, blanks are not available that many. People have stopped using uh, um, 
bifocals, executive bifocals, even the adults, so the blanks are not available, they are progressive, so they have gone for progressive glasses. Taper plus step by step as exo deviation starts with the glasses. This is for a high AC over air ratio and the, I think for the near you can just uh, start tapering and then once it becomes ortho or minimally so, you can prescribe those glasses. So uh, sometimes I think we even change the glasses after a month and depending on the case. So explain to the parents, that is very important, counselling the parents. Case 3 is a 3 year girl with uh, intermittent exotropia. I think in this country the maximum strabismus what we see is intermittent exotropia and uh, I have seen the most of the Asia Pacific countries I think this intermittent exotropias are more common compared to the western population where ESOs are more common especially accommodative isotropias are more in the western population especially the whites. And uh, this three-year girl, girl had an intermittent exotropia with poor control and simply a, just a prescription, not even a myopic prescription, prescription of the cylindrical glasses uh, made the girl orthophoric, almost 15 to 20. And normally I just uh, prefer to operate if it crosses 20 prisms of exo um, uh, for distance. And uh, this child also had the fundus being normal. The pulse in this case will be that prescribed glasses to improve image quality, to improve the control and uh, reduces the episodes of manifest exotropia wherein the child not only loses binocular vision and if one eye is squinting more, that eye tends to become lazy, then I think it becomes a very big project for you. So over minus to stimulate accommodation. There, here I think like a plus, here you can over minus, my, over, add over minus to stimulate accommodation, thus to stimulate convergence. And a spectacle prescription and also prisms can prevert or reverse early sensory anomalies like uh, preventing the child from developing amblyopia and preventing the child from losing the stereopsis. All patients on minus lenses should be re-evaluated to rule development of ESO deviations, like as I told the other uh, story in the ESO deviation, EXO also can lead to an ESO and initially it will be esophoric and then uh, land up with a permanent uh, esotropia and uh, you may have to put the knife on these children. So I will also briefly touch upon frames and alignment though as a pediatric ophthalmologist, you should be aware, I think minimum information I will give because this is all done by the dispensing opticians. So if you have given bifocal, see them to ensure proper positioning, bisecting the pupil if it is a executive bifocal for high AC or A ratio. And also just uh, check uh, because sometimes uh, children have very big frames or very small frames and you should balance. And uh, choose frame with uh, quality spring temple. And uh, nowadays I think even rubber frames are available. Sports protection whenever it is applicable. And uh, preferably for children you should choose a sturdy frame because I many times if they can afford, I ask them to buy two glasses. Because I think once uh, it breaks, the child has to take, the parent has to give the child the second frame and then order for one more like contact lenses what we do, we give them two pairs and uh, deeply grooved uh, frame fronts and uh, the bridge that gives support in the area of the lower portion of the nose pad. Nose pad should not be very firm to the nose because it causes little mark on the nose. So nose, nose pad has to be very smooth and should balance. And uh, lens materials I think people may ask. So basically, I have given glass lens actually <coughs> those days when the glasses were given, they were uh, having a scratch proof and uh, it was uh, actually long run and uh, they could use even for years when the glasses were uh, prescribed those days. And uh, so there, there was an increased impact resistance and uh, though the refractive index was uh, 1.5, 523 average with a maximum of 
the main disadvantage is it was heavy especially if you prescribe plus 10 or minus 10 i think uh, they are very heavy and uh, the limited availability of the glasses with the present scenario i think we are forced to go for uh, plastic and uh, polycarbonate lenses the plastic lenses the famous ones are cr39 and uh, which is less weight i think uh, heavy weight has come uh, we welcome Dr. Pradeep Sharma. <laughs> so, <laughs> he is the pearl actually. The pearl. Vairam Muttu. Muttu means pearl in Tamil. Vairam Muttu means diamond with pearl. So, that is Pradeep Sharma. He was also my guru. Guru in All India Institute. Come, Upper. Bade bade Pradeep. Come, come. So, the plastic lens CR39, it is uh, less heavy and uh, good uh, impact resistant and uh, it does not fog that easily. You would have seen that uh, in an air-conditioned room, most of the plastic lenses, the most of the uh, present-day lenses, uh, they advertise so much, but they used to fog. But in CR39, it is, there will be fogging, but little less fogging. And the refractive index is a little less than the glasses, 1.49, and maximum is 1.74. And disadvantage is scratches. Within a week, you will find that most of the children, they will have a lot of scratches. I used to tell them, the, the glasses developed cataract. That's what I tell them, because when you see, you, you will not be able to see even 6 by 60 with that glasses. The child will have only 6 by 60 when the scratches are plenty. And uh, the last one, polycarbonate. This is what uh, I prescribe for most of the children. It is high impact resistance and it has an increased safety and it is the lens of choice for the present generation and the refractive index is around 1.6 and uh, the disadvantage again is a scratch. So there are no big uh, scratch proof glasses and it is business for the dispensing and opticians. So with this, let me conclude my talk and uh, just one last slide on improving the compliance. And uh, you will have to maintain uh, very good records and uh, see what uh, has been given earlier and counter check with the prescription because many times the parents get confused, they will, you will be the sixth consultant to see. And they may project, uh, they will give you some other glasses, they will give the prescription of uh, some other prescription uh, and uh, the glasses and prescription won't match. So it is your duty to counter check whether the child is wearing the same glasses. And uh, always educate the parents and uh, adaptation time is there for uh, even myopic glasses or hyperopic glasses or astigmatic glasses. And sometimes we give in hypermetropia weak uh, cycloplegics to make them comfortable and uh, there is no need to go for very popular uh, frames and uh, in children because it's so expensive number two I think they are going to break it and uh, they are going to mishandle the frame. So it is better that uh, uh, somewhat, if they can afford it's fine, but most of the patients are middle class. So, I think there are frames available even for uh, less than 1000 rupees. And uh, you can try that so that uh, they can have a couple of frames even if it breaks. And uh, I think uh, most of the time we just ask them to attach a band with a tie knot on the back so that it stays. And uh, I think uh, with this, my primary talk is over. Thank uh, you, Santan, for uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, Thank you. So then